Making electricity from sunlight was just a scientific experiment 150 years ago. But now, with revolutionary changes in technology, more and more people across the world are using the sun to generate their own electricity. Here in Pakistan, where there is between 8 to 10 hours of load shedding every day, many people, including myself, have decided to go for solar voltaic cells as the way to generate our own electricity. In this program, I want to tell you how this is done, how the electricity is produced, stored and used. Also, to tell you about the advantages and some of the problems. Let's take a quick tour of the house and see how this is done. This is how solar electricity is generated. Light from the sun falls upon these solar photovoltaic cells. And this over here is a panel of cells. Each panel, and there are five of them, one, two, three, four, five. There are five at the back as well. Generates 280 watts of electricity. So that's a total of 2,800 watts. Now, of course, this is the maximum because when the sun goes down, they, you will get zero output. As you can see from this graph, the maximum energy is generated at 12 noon and you can get useful amounts of electricity from about 9 o'clock in the morning up till 4 o'clock in the evening. Now, this 2800 watts is something that we are getting for free from the sun. And the sun's been around for 4 billion years. It's only now that we are beginning to use its energy. But as I look around to the other houses over here, I see that they're not as yet exploiting this. Why? Because they think it's expensive. But if you look at how much energy you will save over 10 years, then this entire expense can be justified. But right now, we need to understand how this energy that is generated on the roof is actually sent to the house downstairs. The current has to be first regulated because sometimes there is a lot of current and sometimes less current because the sun is shining strongly or not. Then it has to be stored in a battery so that you can use the photovoltaic energy even at night. But then batteries put out DC current and your refrigerators and TVs, etc., need AC. So therefore you need an inverter. The inverter converts the DC to AC. And this is how the house runs on electricity. These four batteries store the energy that is produced by the photovoltaics on the roof. Here is the inverter. This converts the DC into the AC, which is then used throughout the house. Here in Islamabad, there is a lot of sun and a lot of electricity that can be generated. But in other parts of the country, there is even more. On this graph, the red parts are those where one receives even more sunshine, but even in the green parts, there is still a lot of electricity that can be generated. Actually, we use only something like one-tenth to one-twentieth of all the energy of the sun that comes upon per meter. As solar voltaics become better and better, we are going to be using more and more of that. Now, one great advantage of solar photovoltaic technology is that you don't need a grid system. So, in villages and in places that are far away from the cities, it is highly advantageous to use solar photovoltaics. And as you can see in this picture, they have been used in places across Pakistan. In many parts of the world, including India and Pakistan, Large-scale solar plants are being installed with capacities of greater than 100 megawatts. In the end, 
Two points. First, I haven't told you how much the system of solar photovoltaic cells, the inverter and the batteries cost. And the reason is that the price keeps coming down every year. In fact, today, solar photovoltaic technology is competitive with other forms of energy in countries like Germany and China. There is a condition, however, for photovoltaic cells to be competitive. The amount of energy that is produced just in this house is several times greater than what can be consumed. Now, in Germany and in most of Europe, what happens is that the excess electricity is given back to the grid through what is called reverse metering. So in fact, if a house produces more electricity than it consumes, then that house gets paid either in terms of cash or in terms of credit. This is something that absolutely needs to happen in Pakistan. And although the government has agreed to it, so far that promise has not been implemented. This is something that we have to get the government to agree on.